Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to the Poker Vlog. This is session number 27. Going to be playing at the Aria 2-5 No Limit. If you're catching this video right now, Sunday, May 15th, I'm going to be heading to the MGM to uh, support the meetup game for Mariano and Rampage. Should be some 1-2 match to stack, 2-5 No Limit. Not sure what's going on, but I'm going to head up there about 3 p.m. If anybody wants to join, that'd be cool. Um, that's about it. Let's get into the action at the Aria 2-5 No Limit. All right, we grab what we think is the max buy-in, $1,000, and a few minutes in, we pick up pocket tens in middle position, under the gun player limps, and we raise it to 20. Folds over to the small blind who makes the call, limper calls as well, and we go three ways to a flop, six, five, three with two diamonds. About as good a flop as you can hope for with pocket tens, shouldn't have connected well with an early limper. Action checks to me, and I bet 25. It's not enough to get either to fold as both players make the call, so we go to a turn, which brings a king of diamonds completing the flush draw. Action checks to me again. Doubtful we still have the best tan with two callers, but we do have the ten of diamonds. We'll take a free river card. It gets worse as a four of hearts hits, putting out a few one card straights. Small blind leads out now for 40. Next player calls. I lay it down and small blind shows king six for top two pair. Under the gun limper shows 10 seven of spades for the straight. Crushed by both, but it appears we're in a good game. Next, we have ace eight offsuit in the big blind. Middle position player raises to 15. Hijack and cutoff make the call. We're getting a great price, so I make the call for 10 more. We go four ways to a flop. King, eight, three, all spades. We flop uh, middle pair and nut flush draw. I check. Original Razor checks and action checks through. Turn brings a blank four of diamonds. Time to take control here. I lead with a bet of 30 with what may be the best hand at the moment. Original Razor calls and the other players fold. Since we have the ace of spades when he calls on the turn, I'm putting him on a pair of like nines through queens. He could have checked a king on that flop as well if he's not holding the spade. Regardless, we plan on applying max pressure no matter what the river is since we're holding the key card, the ace of spades. So looking for a spade, but the river brings plan B, a nice eight of clubs, improving us to trips. If my opponent thought he was good on the turn, this shouldn't have changed much. I size up with a bet of 105 for value. He goes into the tank for 30 seconds and eventually tosses out a call. I show the goods and we take it down. Let's drag that first pot in together. Right after this hand, we find out that the new max is 1500 in the Aria 2-5 game. You can also run the board twice, which is new. So we top off the stack, adding on 400. There's a few players with over 1000, so I want to make sure we got it covered. Let's get back to the action. Next, we have Queen-8 suited in the cutoff. Action folds to me, and I raise to 15. Folds to the big blind who makes the call. We go heads up, flop the world, 10-9-7 with the 10-9 of clubs. So. We're open-ended with a gut shot straight flush draw. Too bad, it's a heads up, small pot. She checks over to me. Pot's only 30 bucks, but we want to start getting some money in there with such a strong hand in position. I bet $10. She makes the call. Turn brings a brick, three of hearts. She checks it again. I wouldn't stop betting with a set or an overpair here, so I continue with a bet of 30, and she makes the call. We drill the second best card in the deck on the river, the jack of diamonds, completing a queen high straight. We have the second best hand possible. We're hoping she has an eight as well. Maybe makes two pair. She checks it over. We bet 60 for value, but she quickly makes the lay down. Next, we have King Jack offsuit in the big blind. Cutoff raises to 20 and it folds to me. Oftentimes I just fold this hand heads up or three bet sometimes since we're out of position, but decide to defend here for 15 more and I'm glad I did. Heads up to a flop, queen 10, nine with two hearts. We drill the nuts. I check it over to the aggressor, he checks back. We get a blank four of clubs on the turn. Normally I'd lead here, but decide to get sneaky and check again, hoping he stabs, and he does. This time he tosses out a bet of 25. Now we can stick in a raise that might look suspicious after checking twice. I make it 80 to see the river card, and he quickly calls. Maybe he checked back like ace queen on the flop, maybe even pocket aces. River brings a five of clubs, so we still have the best hand possible. Another situation that if he called the turn with a hand with some value, hopefully we can get paid again on the river here. I make a bet of 140, about three quarters of the pot, and he snap calls. We show the nuts and take down another pot. Smooth session so far, and it gets better. Very next hand, pocket aces in the small blind. Same player from last hand raises to 20 from the hijack. Cutoff calls, button calls, actions on us, price is going way up. I put in a 3-bet to 140, hoping to get this one heads up. 
Action's back on the original Razor who appears to be gathering raising chips. It's hard to tell, but it's true. He puts out a 4-bet to 360. The other players folds, and it's back on us. He looks to have about four to 450 behind, so with that sizing, he kind of committed himself. I could just get it in now, but I'm pretty sure he's jamming any flop, so it seems more fun to just flat here, see the flop. So I make the call. We go heads up to a flop, queen, jack, three, rainbow. Actually, not a great flop at all, since all we're really beating is ace, king, and pocket kings now, but we're supposed to be all in anyway. I check, he jams as expected. We make the call, and the board runs out, seven of spades, six of hearts. Luckily, get the good news that he has ace-king. So we dodge the 10, and we pick up a massive pot here. Great start, up about 1,200 now. Nice so we go quiet for about an hour before picking up ace-queen in the small blind. Same opponent from last hand raises to 20. Earlier, we each had ace-king and chopped. It's kind of a small pot. This time he makes a 20, next two players call, we're in the exact same situation as the aces. I don't like just calling with ace-queen offsuit out of position, so I put the same size 3 bet in as before, make it 140 to play. Back to the original raiser, he's looking for revenge, he puts in the same 4 bet to 360. He's reloaded for 1000, looks prepared to get it all in again. He's shown some pretty strong hands when he has raised, so we might be crushed this time, possibly against kings, maybe ace-king again, so I make the lay down on this one. Next we have pocket fives on the button. Player who has been limping often does so again from early position. Folds to me, I make it 20. He's the only caller, so we go heads up to a flop, queen, six, four, rainbow. Pretty good flop for a pair of fives. He checks it over, I bet 15. He makes the call, we get a king of hearts on the turn, puts two hearts on the board now. He checks it to us. It's a great card for our raising range. I continue betting as I would with my strong hands, and I make a bet of 50. I think we can knock him off some queens, maybe some middle pairs with some pressure here. The opposite happens as he puts in a check raise to 150. Pretty strong play. Haven't seen him put in a significant amount of money yet this session. He limp calls a lot of pre-flop hands, so the sets make sense. King Queen's also a possibility, so I lay this one down, and I actually hear him whisper to his neighbor that he turned a straight and flush draw. So maybe sounds like he peeled with 9-10 or jack-10 of hearts and put in a semi-bluff on the turn. Nice play. Next, we pick up a real hand. Pocket Kings in middle position. Under the gun player limps. Same opponent from last hand, likes to limp. I race to 25. Button calls, and the limper calls. We go three ways to a flop, seven, eight, nine, rainbow. Not an ideal flop. First player checks. It's a coordinated board with two callers, so I check for pot control. Button senses weakness and bets 50. Next player folds, and it's on us. We can't go anywhere just yet. Our hand is under repped. We are still ahead of a lot of hands like tens, jacks, nine, 10, ace, nine. Still hoping to get to showdown for the minimum here. So I make the call, we get a blank deuce of hearts on the turn. I check to the aggressor, he bets another 50. Feels like he's taking us to value town, but for the same reasons on the flop, I make the call. The price is just too good. It gets worse as the river brings a five of hearts. Backdoor hearts get there as well as a single six that makes us straight. Not really worried about a six though for him to call 25 and barrel the flop and turn. So. I check for the last time and now he bets 75, only leaving himself about 100 behind. With roughly 280 in the pot, why wouldn't you put it all in here? I see this out of a lot of recreational players quite often as a dealer. Instead of barreling at all, which will usually work, they leave some behind. So with all this information and the fact that we're getting over four and a half to one, I make the call. And when he says you're good, I just roll over the kings and we take it down. A little bit after the hand, he would say he had pocket tens. A little surprised he wouldn't have just checked them back on the river after being called on two streets and getting a couple scare cards there. Thank you. Next, we have ace queen offsuit from under the gun. I raised to 15. Action folds around to the big blind who defends. He makes the call. We go heads up to a flop. Ace, four, deuce, rainbow. He checks to me. With top pair, queen kicker against the big blind, I'm expecting it to be over right here. That's not what happens. I bet $10, and he quickly check raises me to 30. Too strong to fold for 20 more. He might just have a, a worse ace here, so I call, and the turn brings a six of clubs. He fires out 75 now, so it appears he's repping at least two pair. 
I'm leaning toward fold button, but can't find it anywhere. I make the call and the river gets worse, bringing a five of clubs. Now he checks, I check back, he shows ace, deuce of clubs. So he flopped two pair, back doors, ace, high flush. He checked it, nice hand, sir. I think I should have found that fold on the turn. Just two hands later, we pick up pocket kings again, this time from the small blind. The same opponent from last hand moved to the other side of the table. I guess I didn't smell very well. He opens the action to 15 for middle position. Folds to me. I put in the three bet to 55. He makes the call. We go heads up to a flop. King, five, three, all hearts. We nail top set. I lead for one third pot with a bet of 35. Opponent checks his cards for hearts and puts out a call. Turn is horrible. Jack of hearts putting four hearts on the board now. I check to him and he very nicely checks back. If he knew my hand, he'd be putting in a lot of money. Come on, dealer, punish him for that. River improves our hand, but not in the way we wanted. Six of hearts on the river. We go from top set to playing a king high flush on the board. I check to him and he bets 100. Pretty confident he has a heart after checking those cards in the flop. I make the lay down face up. My man is a viewer of the channel. He's nice enough to show us the ace of hearts. Bright side is we got away super cheap on that one. Nothing eventful for about 90 minutes before picking up pocket queens from the hijack. The previous hand, pocket queens just made quads to crack pocket aces all in pre-flop for about 1600. We're looking for some of that magic, get the session back on track. Under the gun player limps, I race to 20. The button calls and action is on the small blind who wants to play for more. He puts in the 3 bet to 90. It's the same player from last hand. After that 3 bet, he only has about 360 behind. Two hands prior, he just lost about 400 when he 4 bet jammed ace jack and ran into aces. So I feel like we have the best hand and he's ready to gamble. Next player folds. I've put in the four bet to 305 to get it heads up. Button folds and the small blind says, you want to go all in? I say, yes. So here we go. What do you have? Do you want to show only one card? Okay. No, no. all right. We agree to show one card pre-flop, one card on the flop. He shows the king, we show the queen. Ace king. The pressure's on. <laughs> I had my favorite hand. After the flop, we can show the other one. I folded my favorite hand. Six, eight. Flop comes seven, eight, eight. Buttons disgusted. He folded his favorite hand. Six, eight. The other player shows his jack, so we're in great shape. Bad news. No waiting. He drills the king on the turn. Now we're in terrible shape. We need the queen. It's a brick. King Jack's going to take it down here for a huge pot. The session's taking a turn for the worse. So now we're only up about 450 after being up 1300 at our high point. Let's get to the last hand of the night. We have ace king offsuit on the button. Under the gun player limps, he's a new player with about 2500 in front. Action folds to us. I race to 20. Blinds fold and the limper makes the call. We go heads up to a flop, four, five, six rainbow, no help. He checks to me, I just check this one back. We nail a king on the turn. Our opponent likes the king as well. He takes the lead with a bet of 25. I don't think there's any sense in raising here as one of us is just likely way behind. If he checks the river, we'll go for some value there. But we do get a terrible river with a seven of spades, but he's not worried. He continues betting, sizes up with 75 on the river. We're just hoping he has a worse king um, since he made that bet on the turn. I make the call and he shows 9-10. So glad we played it the way we did to keep his bluffs in and get some more value there. That's going to do it for this one, guys. I feel like the game is lost. That's Mojo in the game for 1400 out for 1970 So still booked a nice win. Could have been much better. We'll catch you at the end of the video. All right, guys, that's it for poker session number 27 from the Aria today. Hope you guys enjoyed the hands. If you did, please hit all the buttons as usual, except that dislike button. That's not going to help any. Don't do that. Um, but no, I appreciate you guys watching as usual. Leave some comments and feedback. Uh, pretty happy overall today. I felt like I was dead on today, except that ace queen versus the ace deuce hand. My gut was kind of telling me I was no good there, but um, still, I don't think that's like a major mistake. Ace queen's supposed to be good sometimes there. But uh, other than that, made some good folds, made some good uh, bets, value bets. So uh, always happy with booking a $570 win, even though we had potential to win, I don't know, about 2000 today. Uh, 570 is still good in my book. I'll take that every time. Uh, yeah, that's it. As always, thanks for watching. Stay to the end for a cool trick shot. See you guys next Sunday, which should be a vlog from 
today when I go play at MGM. So not sure what I'm going to be playing. Maybe one to match the stack, which could get wild, or a deep 2-5 game. So thanks guys for watching. Catch you next time. Have a good one.